I had the Milwaukee Bucks winning it all this season, both before the season and going into the playoffs. A team that has the best player in the world, one of the best defensive teams in the NBA, a well-rounded roster with shooting, size, depth in the second unit, and finishing with the best record in the regular season in the NBA. There was no doubt in my mind that this team had what it took to win the championship. That is, until they had to face this man right here in the first round of the playoffs, Jimmy G Buckets, who somehow had channeled his inner Michael Jordan and showed the world why you can never count him out. He said it himself, he is stupidly locked in in this postseason. But Jimmy Butler going off and looking like MJ out there is one thing. It's another thing for a number one seed who finished with the best record in the NBA to lose to an eight seed in five games and completely falling apart in games four and five, having a strong lead late in the game. That is unprecedented. We have never seen a meltdown from a number one seed like this in the first round. What happened and what does it potentially mean for the Bucks going forward into their offseason? Well, that's what we'll be discussing in this video. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and in return, I'll be providing more NBA content like this. Now, it is important to note that the Milwaukee Bucks, in their defense, Giannis, who I still consider to be the best player in basketball, although some might disagree with that take now after the series, was out for a good portion of this series, missing most of game one after exiting early and was out for games two and three, which had Giannis been available, it might have changed the outcome of this series. You never know. But there is something to be said about just how poorly the Bucks played throughout this one. Aside from Jimmy Butler's absolutely incredible playoff performance, which I talked about in a prior video after that epic fourth quarter rally in game four. But for the Bucks, a team that has played so well throughout the season, a team that was seemingly constructed perfectly together, absolutely fell apart on the biggest stage, crumbling under the pressure of being down in a first round playoff series. And it starts with head coach Mike Budenholzer, who was out coached by Eric Spolstra. I have a hard time seeing how he recovers his career after this. Granted, Spo is one of the better coaches in the NBA and has been so for a long time now. There is a reason he's one of the longest tenured coaches in the NBA next to Greg Popovich, but Coach Bud's inability to make proper adjustments late in games four and five were inexcusable for a team that should have had this series locked up as an easy pass going into the second round. The Miami Heat outscored the Bucks 41 to 25 in the fourth quarter in game four and 32 to 16 in the fourth in game five. The Heat were throwing zone defense at the Bucks, putting in rotations the Bucks couldn't figure out, and for the life of them, could not lock up Jimmy Butler in the fourth quarter. Very few double teams. Rarely did you have Giannis guarding Jimmy. And this is knowing the Heat are without their second scoring option in Tyler Hero. Jimmy is going to be the go-to scorer down the stretch with limited options offensively. And Coach Bud did not have a game plan to try and stop Butler despite every possession with him controlling the ball in the final minutes. How does that happen? But even more egregious than that, specifically talking about Game 5, is the fact that Bud twice did not call a timeout on the final possession both in regulation and in overtime, giving the Bucks no option to set up a play to save their season. Did he not realize they had a timeout? Maybe he did and thought it would just have been better to throw off the heat by not getting their defense set? Whatever it was, the Bucks ending their season with the ball in Grayson Allen's hands, not being able to get a shot off before the horn by trying a Euro step into the paint, I'm sure was not how Budenholzer envisioned their season ending. I'll be honest, I have a hard time seeing him keeping this job after something like that, especially when considering you lost to an eight seed in a gentleman's sweep when most predicted it would be the other way around. The half court offense down the stretch was also just atrocious to watch with little floor spacing, guys standing around, not keeping up the pace, a stagnant offense that simply looked lost out there and panicking, realizing their season was on the line. Budenholzer, not setting up effective plays in the half court or getting his team to push the pace in transition was unacceptable, and not keeping Brooke Lopez in, one of the better rim protectors in the entire NBA, on that game-tying lob from Jimmy Butler was a fireball offense. Yeah, Jimmy might have gotten away with a push-off before catching the ball one-handed and putting up while falling away, which is still an epic all-time shot that we'll ever see in the NBA playoffs, but how? Do you not have your best rim protector in the game knowing the final play is going to be a lob given there was just a couple seconds on the clock is beyond me. Coach Bud aside, let's also not forget this play though. Yes, Giannis is arguably the best player in the world. He's a dominant force and the reason the Bucks have become relevant in recent years. And yes, the Bucks need to do better overall in executing as a team down the stretch, but you also cannot have your best player hiding from the ball like this to avoid being sent to the free throw line and nearly turning it over acting like the basketball was a game of hot potato. Giannis, as incredible as he is, 38 points, 20 rebounds in game five, has to work on his free throw shooting. 
going 10 for 23 from the line is unacceptable in today's NBA, especially for a player who loves to get downhill, attacking the basket and drawing contact on the way to the hoop. You cannot make yourself a liability on offense late in games when you're shooting free throws below 50%. Aside from that though, the Bucks got little to no help from their bench, a bench that has been so great for them all season with guys like Bobby Portis being an energizer who can crash the boards, score inside as well as shoot it from deep, floor spacers like Pat Connaughton and Wes Matthews, just 13 points in total coming off the bench in Game 5 and 16 points in Game 4. While the Heat's second unit torched the Bucks throughout this series, with even guys like Duncan Robinson and Caleb Martin coming up big. And look, this doesn't take away from the fact that Jimmy Butler was a huge reason for why the Bucks lost this series. But I did give Jimmy Butler an appreciation video highlighting that epic playoff performance in Game 4. I don't want to keep reiterating that here. He was incredible, and it will go down as one of the greatest individual playoff series performances in NBA history. Still though, the Bucks losing like this, in embarrassing fashion on their own home court, blowing the big fourth quarter lead is a failure. Giannis might not call it one, as I'm sure most caught in his postgame presser, but this was absolutely a failed season considering the championship aspirations they had, and even though only one team out of 30 can win a title, it's one thing to lose in a first round series in five games as the number one seed. So I guess now the question is, where do the Bucks go from here? They're still a very talented team. They've shown they're one of the best teams in the NBA. They just won a championship two years ago, but a playoff performance like this means some serious reflection and changes need to be made. And of course, it starts with the firing of Coach Budenholzer. You simply cannot keep him as your head coach when he was that bad in a playoff series. I've said in the past, Coach Bud is an overrated coach that has gotten so much praise over the years for his success with the Hawks and now the Bucks, and that championship in 2021 made everyone believe the fool's gold of a coach he truly was was really not the case and that Bud deserved his flowers. But after witnessing this series, you can't deny that he's an average coach at best and should not be the coach of this team going forward. After that, you look at their roster and see what needs adjustments. Giannis is under contract through 2026. Obviously, you're not getting rid of him. That would be insane. Drew Holiday is under contract next season with a player option the following year. Chris Middleton has a player option, actually, for next season to the tune of $40 million, which I have a very hard time seeing him declining that player option. So your big three are likely all set to remain and run it back. The biggest question mark, though, is Brooke Lopez, free agent, 35 years old, but was critical for them in terms of his defense, rim protection, as well as a big that can help space the floor for Giannis. They have to re-sign Lopez to hopefully a short-term team-friendly deal, but re-signing him, and with the rest of the guaranteed money on their books, they are most certainly going to operate as an over-the-cap team, which will give them limited flexibility to bring in other free agents to round out the roster. Pat Connaughton, they have signed through 2026. Bobby Portis is also signed through 2026. Grayson Allen, they also have under contract next season. This team is limited in what they can do to make meaningful changes to their roster and will be forced to run it back, which isn't a bad thing. They've proven to be a great team the last three or four years with this crew. The biggest change that needs to be made is on the coaching staff getting rid of Coach Bud, finding a competent coach that maximizes this group's potential and makes the necessary in-game adjustments in the postseason so as not to waste Giannis's prime any further. Nick Nurse, anyone? The Bucks front office should be making that call today to make up for this disaster of a playoff series. I'd love to hear what you guys think, though. What did you make of this playoff series between the Bucks and the Heat, and what's next for the Milwaukee Bucks going forward? Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.